Hey everyone, it's Calvin, also known as Romer, and this is Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations, and we're about to cross-examine Ron, and try to find something in what he said that was a little bit wrong, but I don't think that's gonna be the case this time, because we've been kind of looking through this, the blackmail letter I got it ordered me to go there, and I was kind of thinking about this before we started recording, but like, I've been working at KB Security until a year ago, so I knew that where, where the, his office was. I don't think these are going to be situations where he's saying anything wrong, because he's not. He's not saying one thing wrong, I don't think he's lying about anything. But maybe we can press his statements to kind of get more information out of him, because that's happened in previous cases too, so let's try press all the statements. Let's try it. Uh, 1am, huh? You're absolutely sure about that? Well, oh, I didn't expect us to sound this dumb. Because <laughs> we know it was 1am, right? It's kind of been proven at this point. Yeah, that's what my watch said when I was entering the CEO's office. Uh, no. Actually, I'm not really sure. My watch was slow, and my internal clock was also a bit... 1am. That's the exact time the victim Mr. Buller was murdered, correct? It's too late for a coffee date, that's for sure. Is it? I don't know, man. The blackmail letter I got, it ordered me to go there, so let's press this as well. It ordered you to go there? It was the first time I got a blackmail letter that ordered me to go somewhere. Does that mean you got another blackmail letters then? Uh, oh, of course. They'd say things like, steal this or take that. Haha, <laughs> wanted to save those for later, Mr. Delight. Please don't say any more. Now, what should I do? I think we should press harder, because I want to find out more about the, like, if we can find out who's blackmailing him, this is going to help a whole lot. If you have any, like, lead to this, this would be good. So what did the blackmail letter in question say? It said, bring 50,000. Money, eh? A perfect motive for committing murder. Oh, but wait, wait! I never intended to pay that money anyway. Oh, is that right? After all, he had nothing to hold over my head. I had nothing to be afraid of. Oh, okay. An important point indeed. Witness, let's have that added to your testimony. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he has, makes a good point because, like, like, what evidence did he really have? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, we, we could have, make assumptions, but, like, I don't think he could ever put him in prison for being, like, uh, look at this adorable boy for, you know, for getting in trouble like that. <laughs> a muddy mudskipper in outer space has a better chance of surviving than I do. The blackmail threat didn't scare me. It wasn't going to cause me trouble or anything. So we have that, and then we had I've been working for KB Security until a year ago. I want to press this one as well. Let's just press it for the sake of it. Just what were you being blackmailed about anyway? The blackmail letter said you don't want your identity revealed, correct? I'm sure it was referring to the whole mask to mask thing. But I, I wasn't worried. Mr. Bull didn't have anything on me. He, he didn't? Anyway, I don't care what anyone says about me. Just as long as Desi believes in me. Oh, that's adorable, Ron. That's adorable. So that's why Mr. Light didn't believe he was mask to mask. That's why I knew they were just hollow threats. Hmm. I've been working at KB Security. Can we try and find out why he was fired? Like, because, unless he left, but I assume it was something like he was fired. Because, like, he doesn't seem bad at his job. He literally saved a woman from a robbery. I don't think I'd ever fire someone like that. You know what I mean? Maybe? I don't know. Let's see. You used to be a security chief for KB Security, right? Uh, yes, that's right. A security chief? You? And yet, a year ago, you were fired without notice. Okay, so he knows about this. Revenge for an old grudge? A perfect motive for murder, wouldn't you say? Hmm. This isn't good. Maybe I should change the subject. Why he was fired. Life after being fired. Don't say anything. No, here's the thing. Don't say anything. I don't think it's going to help us at all in this situation. We need to know more information. Yes, it might dig us deeper, but I feel like if we dig a little bit deeper, we might find the light under the ground in the tunnel somewhere. Life after being fired, don't say anything. Let's say why he was fired, because life after being fired isn't going to give us anything. Mr. Delight, please tell us why you were fired from your job. Well... The world is filled with those who have said, I wish I'd never asked that. Uh, okay, then I take it. Defendant, please answer the question. I, well, I needed money. You, you needed money? Um, well, you see, Desi loves to spend it. it. It's kind of her hobby. Not exactly the best hobby in the world to have, huh? In the world, huh, Nick? What about you? Don't you love money too? My salary wasn't nearly enough. So I sold data from the- Oh, no. Ron, 
Ronnie stole data from the company. <laughs> Ronnie, no. Come again? KB Security has a lot of security infos on all of sorts of companies. And since I was a security team chief, you stole some data and sold it. Mr. Buller found out and I was fired immediately. Oh, no. yeah. See, this thing is, I, I don't think it's totally incriminating, but, like, so far he's wanted to say he was a thief. And now he's saying that he, like, stole from the company he worked in. You know, I really think that juries and judges take morals into account as well when they're basing stuff off certain situations, right? If they've done something before, they might do something again. But I think also they have to take into account that, like, stealing something is so, is so far on the other end from, from murder. It's so different. Like, let's be honest. I was somehow able to keep secret and I made it seem like I quit on my own. Oh, wow. Well done. <laughs> Me congratulating him. Well done. Congratulations. Uh, what is it, Nick? You don't look so good. Someone who brings harm to their company is fired as punishment. You do well to remember that. He sure told you. So you admit that you stole data from your company, is that correct? Yes, I'm sorry. This is a very important fact. Please add it to your testimony. Oh, oh man, this whole thing just took a big turn for the worse. Crashed and blew up. It's gonna take the jaws of life to rip this case from the clutches of disaster. He fired me for selling company secrets, but Desi doesn't know about that. Wait a second. I've been working at KB Security a year ago. The blackmail threat didn't scare me. It wasn't going to cause me trouble or anything. Maybe the blackmail letter wasn't about... Or maybe it was about his identity, but he also had maybe some information that he... It wasn't going to cause me trouble or anything, but... He fired me for selling company secrets, but Desi doesn't know about that. If he told Desiree that he was fired, so we do have some information now. So we pressed this before, but it didn't work. So if we maybe present. Oh, buddy, I hope this doesn't. Well, look, okay, everything we do digs him deeper, right? Everything we do digs him a little bit deeper. So let's see if this gets us anything. Mrs. Light, what you said just now doesn't match what you told me yesterday. Huh? Uh, what doesn't? I think you must have been scared. Very scared. Of having a certain person find out your secret. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, this is exactly what I was thinking as well. I'm glad that we did, the, like, they gave us the information afterwards as well that we could go back. That's really cool. A certain person? Miss Desiree Delight, the defendant's wife. Oh, but I... Listen to me, my Desi, she's... Looks like if I just sit back and relax, the fun will end before it truly begins. Uh, good old. Yes, we know. It was all your wife's fault. Uh, what do you mean? Mr. Delight stole company data to pay for his wife's spending habit, for which she was fired. I wonder if Ron has sat down and said, like, hey, I don't make as much money as you think. You know, I think that he's kind of letting her think that she makes he makes a lot more money than, you know, he lets on, because it seems like he's a lot of secrets from her, you know? And Desi doesn't seem unreasonable. She seems very supportive. I assume that if they had a conversation about it, it would be very different, you know? She seems like a pretty good person. Unable to face his own wife, someone uses dirty little secret to blackmail him. With such a fantastic design. Uh, and that is how this murder came about. Oh, um. No, everything is falling neatly into place for him. Look, we have to do this to get out, you know what I mean? We have to dig deeper. Dark is before the dawn. Don't talk about my Desi like that. Or you'll be sorry. Oh, no. That sounds like a big threat. Well, it seems that we've learned a great deal of things here so far. What do you think, Nick? I didn't think it was possible to get so thoroughly whipped in, j in just 20 minutes. Clearly there was sufficient motive for the murder. He stole data for his wife, and he killed to protect his secret. A family man who cared just a little too much. The motive is clear. Let's move on. Ugh. What happened at the crime scene at 1 in, in the morning, Mr. Delight? Come on now, tell us. We're all ears. At the CEO's office, okay. So this is a second testimony he's making as well, which is actually, like, incredibly important. Again, while, like, I think Godot is very, like, overconfident and, like, is actually ruining our cases in some cases, uh, at some parts, um... 
I said last time it was kind of refreshing that he just moves the case along a little bit because like sometimes the, the the guys we're against will like in a very comedic and funny way will try to ruin the case like by like stalling it or whatever but he's doing this for a reason because he's trying to let us walk into all these traps he did it last time as well in like an incredible fashion where he made us like win the case so he could win the next case which was genius um a genius story point I should say when I entered the office, there was suspicious, a uh, sus suspicious shadow there. We're gonna press that for sure. That's Adamy. That's Adamy right there. That is Adamy. Like the shadow is Adamy. Suddenly, I was hit on the forehead. After that, I remember being a bit dazed. If I hadn't been wearing that, I would have been killed. When I came to, Mr. Buller was lying there dead. So you feel like you were being killed and not attacked. Suddenly hit on the forehead, huh? I believe the detective from yesterday provided a similar testimony. He said the master mask struck him on the head from behind. Of course, since Anime turned out to be the culprit himself, that was all a lie. But we still have the broken weapon. No one's going to believe a pathetic lie like that. What? What are you saying? I really was attacked. We'll find out if what you say is true or not during the cross-examination. God and I, Mr. Trite, don't go easy on it just because he's your client. If I see any sign that you are, I'll treat you to another cup of my special blend. And you'll get kicked out of court, so how about that? Oh, no, no you won't, because the judge just likes stuff like that. The judge loves it. You don't need to worry about that, Mr. Godome. I have faith in Ron. I know he didn't do it. I agree with Phoenix. I agree with Phoenix in this. Look at his face and tell me he's a killer. Look at him. So when I entered the office, there was suspicious, sh uh, sus suspicious shadow there. Um, the reason I want to press this is because I want to like get more information on what, like, if he saw the silhouette, if he saw some information on what the shadow was. Oh no, there's a poster falling in my room. When I entered the office, yeah, okay, we're pressing this for sure right away. Who was? It? Well, he's not gonna know, Phoenix. If there was a thousand of me, and even one knew, I tell you, trust me, that's beautiful, Ron. So poetic. He's, uh, his dodging of all our questions is not helping us win, win this case. Okay, then how was the victim, Mr. Bullard, at that time? What do you mean by how was he? Was he already dead? Was he still alive? Okay, this is this is good. Maybe he was the one who hit you in the first place. That's a good question. What do you think, Mr. Wright? <laughs> I don't know, Ron. Go, go get some lunch. You've done enough. Suddenly, I was hit in the forehead. After that, I remember being a bit dazed. I'm gonna press this too. Your forehead? Yes, I was hit on the forehead as soon as I entered the room. It was an amazingly fast and powerful attack. Do you remember anything about who hit you? Well, like I said, it was a fast and powerful hit. So I think I was a little dazed for a while. I don't think Mr. Delight even grasped what you were asking. Yeah. I'd like to show him a fast and powerful attack myself. Maybe that would knock some sense back into him. If I had been wearing that, I would have been killed. Wearing what? The, is he talking about the... Were you wearing the costume at the time? That. Could you please clarify what you're referring to? Why, my master mask costume, of course. Wait just a moment. Master mask? Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention it before? You did. You very much did. Just to be on the safe side, I dressed as Master Mask. And then, I descended upon the office of the CEO of KB Security. What? Nick, did you know about this? He, he, he never told me this. I don't recall him ever mentioning it to me either. He went in his full mask. Even I didn't know that. It seems our little friend really loves to keep secrets. I'm sorry, I just never had a chance to mention it up, up until now. Wait, that's not right. Um, you know how sometimes things just s slip your mind? <laughs> My sixth cup of coffee is staring up at me coldly. That's great, Godot. At any rate, we can't ignore this new piece of information. Witness, please correct your testimony. Yeah, well, I mean, that's fine. Like, but like, I guess we're gonna have to press this again. You know? Like... To actually see what he was talking about here with this, like, like, why was he dressed as mask? Yeah, why was he? Why were you dressed up as master mask? 
Why, because I'm Master Mask, of course. What are you talking about? Master Mask's trial is being held next door. Uh, yes, I guess so. Anyway, at that time, I thought I was being blackmailed over mas the Master Mask issue. So I thought I should go as him, just to be safe. Oh, boy. Let me tell you, it's a real pain to move around with that cape. That's why it took a lot longer than I expected. It took a lot longer? What is he talking about? Yeah, we're pressing hard. Of course we are. Hmm, what do you mean by it took a lot longer? Oh, opening the safe, of course. You opened the safe? Ron, you did you open it there? Ronnie boy. My cape got caught on the safe, the safe door. You see, this all happened when I was hiding Mr. Bullet. Oh yeah, he did hide. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, I forgot about that for a second, guys. I forgot about he did hide the body. Didn't he tell us this before, or didn't he say something like this before? What? What was that? Back up a second. Yes, you were the one that hid the body in the safe. Um. Well, yeah. Inconceivable. I thought we got a hint of this before. Maybe we didn't. Why? Just why? What reason could you have? What were you thinking? He was scared. He was terrified. He was panicking. Question. When does someone toss their dirty shorts in the washing machine? Uh, what? The answer is simple. When they take them off. As usual, I have no idea what you're saying. Do you mean that Mr. Delight hid the body because he's the murderer? <laughs> so you're not as stupid as you look. His metaphor this time was really obscure. It was. It was very obscure. I thought we knew about, I guess the judge didn't know about this, because remember they said that he, the body was there when he woke up. So like, it's not like someone else hid the body when he was there, because he would have known who would have hidden it. Mr. Wright, you don't mean that you knew about this whole safe, yeah we did, we did, yeah. Uh, well, yes, okay, thank, yeah, thank god I'm not just misremembering stuff. Why am I the only one not in the loop here? Witness, make sure you add this to your testimony. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. Looks like a storm front is moving in over a fair weather judge. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. I panicked and hid the body in the safe. It took about 10 minutes. This is a hard one. This is actually a difficult one. Why did you hide the body in the safe anyway? Well, because it wouldn't fit in the drawer. Oh my god, Ron. <laughs> Ron! Uh... That's not exactly what I meant. When I saw that corpse, I kind of lost it. I thought, if they find this corpse, they'll think I did it. <laughs> I think you had a simpler reason than that. It's because you killed him. That's why you spent 10 minutes hiding the body. Hmm, that certainly makes more sense. Hold on. 10 minutes? 10 minutes? What do you mean 10 minutes? What is it, Nick? I just had a thought. Under those circumstances, would you normally try to hide the body? And spend 10 whole minutes doing it? Under those circumstances? What circumstances? Oh, hey Nick. If you think his behavior was so strange, why don't you present some evidence that would show just what the circumstances- Wait, hold, hold on, what the circumstances were. What does he mean? Is there anything to do with time here? 1am, no, that's not- that's, that's related to the actual other part of the case. The buzzer went off once at 1 or 2 a.m. on October 12th in the CEO's office. Is this what they mean? The buzzer went off at 1 or 2 a.m. That's the only thing I can actually, like, nothing else really, like... Are they trying to say that because the buzzer was going off and the alarm was going off and because... Our boy wasn't there to turn it off. Are we saying that, like, he would have been more panicked in that situation? That's it. I'll take a look at the court record and present some evidence. We heard them from Mr. Delight yesterday, didn't we? There's not much in his testimony either. I bet he's still hiding something. I won't be surprised. We'll just have to draw it out for him. I just hope he doesn't make things any more complicated. Okay, let's present the, the, that, that, that thing there.
Yeah, let's present it here. Because if this is what the circumstances are talking about, then that's what it would be, right? The the record of this. Do we present the buzzer or do we, or do we present this? Objection. Your Honor, could you please take a look at this record? I like, by the way, that like, for people like me who aren't always very good at these types of games, I like playing them now. I really do like and enjoy them a lot. But like, I like that they kind of like talk it out amongst themselves like my like i wouldn't have known what to do there but my and phoenix together were like oh we should like under those circumstances would he be able to do this like i like that because like then it just doesn't leave you hanging for the entire game because i imagine that like if they didn't have those type of like conversations and hints going into it you'd be sitting here for like so quite a bit of time which in the last game we were sitting there sometimes just trying to figure stuff out for a very long time so i don't know what i'm saying maybe i'm like i think it is helpful sometimes and what might this be the record for the emergency buzzer that connects the CEO's office to security. If the button in the office is pressed, the security team is supposed to come running, but Butts was not there. And according to this record, the buzzer was pushed once at 1.02 a.m. What? If Mr. Ron Delight truly was the murderer, he would have ran as soon as that buzzer sounded. After all, a security guard would have been heading his way. Huh. Let's remember who we're dealing with here. You probably had no idea there was security personnel in the building. He worked there, didn't he? He worked there, you would have known the ins and outs. Up until one year, yeah, up until one year ago, my client was working as a chief, a chief of security. There's no way he wouldn't have known about them. Yeah, he worked there. Oh, this is good, a rally. But as it turns out, the guard never came. That was nothing more than a coincidence. The fact that the guard was a pathetic loser, oh my God, who just gotten punched in the face by his ex's new boyfriend. I wasn't anywhere in the vicinity was not something Mr. Light could have known. Huh. Again, remember who we're dealing with here. It's a sure bet that Mr. Light didn't even notice the buzzer going off. Oh my god. This buzzer is extremely loud. There's no way he could have ignored something like that. If he had been conscious, that is. Conscious? What do you mean by that? Fine. Let's hear your theory. Recall the defendant's testimony. The moment he entered the victim's office, someone attacked him. Mr. Delight says he felt dazed. I'm willing to wager that he was knocked unconscious for at least a few minutes. Unconscious? So he fainted? That's why Mr. Delight didn't know that the buzzer had sounded. And that's why he thought he had time to hide the body. So, what are you- yeah, what are you trying to say, Phoenix? Mr. Delight was knocked out, and the buzzer went off soon afterwards. Now, unless my client was able to hit the buzzer while he was unconscious, it can only mean that the, there was another person in the room at the time, so someone else did press the buzzer. That's right, whoever it was that knocked out Ron Delight. It was whoever it was, they knocked out Ron Delight and then pressed the buzzer. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. Order in the court, Mr. Wright. This, this is... This is preposterous. It was this kid. Ron Delight is the one who killed Kane Bullard. Then who pressed the buzzer? It was... The victim, of course. He pressed the buzzer when the defendant attacked him. He didn't die right away. He must have held on long enough to push the button. <laughs> hmm. So Kane Bullard sounded the buzzer himself? I don't think that's the case. What is your opinion on this, Mr. I do not think this- I do not think it's the case. I need to prove that the real criminal was there at the scene, but how? Can I prove that it wasn't Kane Bullard who sounded the buzzard? The buzzard? The buzzard? The buzzer? I can prove it alright, let's do it. The defense's opinion is this, your honor. This piece of evidence proves that it wasn't the victim who sounded the buzzer. Does it? No, it does! It does! Remember, remember, um... Gumshoe was talking about this. Connected to the basement security guard office, there are no fingerprints on it. And who wears gloves? Everyone in that room, Adamy, and our boy Ron, wear gloves. Two of them. Bullard doesn't, so he couldn't have pressed it. Bullard's the only one who doesn't wear gloves, or at least we don't think he wears gloves. I believe this piece of evidence is incontrovertible evidence. This piece of incontrovertible evidence you were looking for. The emergency buzzer! Is there some kind of clue on it? Absolutely not. 
Hey, come on now. At least give some thought to what you say before opening your mouth. The fact that there are absolutely no clues is itself the clue. Now I'm the one who's clueless. This button has no fingerprints on it. If Mr. Bullard had really uh, pressed it himself, naturally he would have left the fingerprints behind. Oof. That's true. That is true. That is very true. What are you going to object to? Ron Delight obviously wiped them off. In that time? You think that in that time he woke up, went over, wiped it off, opened the safe, took 10 minutes to shove him in there, then left? You think that's what happened, Godot? You think that's what happened, man? Huh? I like your earrings, but that, is that what happened? Why would he? A guard could have come in at any moment. He touched that button, I know he did. The defendant, Mr. Delight, was dressed as Master Mask. And Master Mask always wears gloves. What reason could he possibly have had to wipe the button free of his fingerprints? Exactly. Exactly. Phoenix, that was awesome. That was great. Order, order, order. <laughs> it would seem. I've been forced to eat crow. I wonder what blend of number uh, of number crow flavored coffee this is. Oh, blend number crow flavored coffee this is. Yeah, me too. However, if the real killer was there at the crime scene, why would that person press the emergency buzzer? Shouldn't they have run away without putting themselves in extra danger? It might seem to me that at that point already maybe they couldn't have. But also maybe they knew they, they, they thought that someone would come running. And also you can't leave the doorway, right? Unless it's it must have some sort of lock in it as well. I remember because of the, the, the key card. I don't know, maybe there's a bunch there's probably a bunch of different reasons. Uh <laughs> What's with this awkward silence all of a sudden? <laughs> It looks like you're fresh out of parallel tricks. Okay, no, okay. Here's my thing of this, right? Yes, you have to, like, talk through the information. Why wouldn't he do this? Why would he just do this? But there's enough evidence to show that the buzzer was pressed, right? There's no fingerprints on it. One person in the room, at least, the defendant, didn't have any... Glo had, had gloves on. The other one didn't. The other one did. So, obviously, he didn't press it. So, like, here's the thing. We have evidence that he pressed the buzzer. So I don't know why, like, the judge just saying, why wouldn't he do this, like, with this kind of, like, hypothetical thing would throw this whole thing from for a loop. We have evidence. They're on to you, Nick. Aren't they? Just give me a minute to collect my thoughts. The real culprit killed Mr. Bullard at around 1 a.m., okay. And Mr. Delight just happened to waltz in when the murder was taking place, right? The killer clobbered Mr. Delight and then sounded the buzzer. Even though security was supposed to respond right away, if the buzzer was pressed, security was supposed to respond, hmm? That's what I was thinking, right? Time's up, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you have to say. Very well, then. Oh, you've got some guts. I like that in opponent. Why did the real killer sound the emergency buzzer? They didn't mean to, to call the security guard to find out what it did? I think to call the security guard is the best bet. That's what I said before. Like, why else? Like, I feel like, I feel like if you work in a security company, you're expecting security to show up on time, right? The killer knew that if they pressed that button, a guard would come running. And that was exactly what they wanted. Do you mean... To say the killer called the guard on purpose, so the killer did it. Yeah, okay, I was thinking something, I was thinking on, on the lines of like why, because of course he didn't press it himself, the, the, the victim. Yeah, I, like I almost, that almost slipped my mind because we were talking about gloves like a second ago. But yeah, like, Adamy must have pressed it then. Because he was getting his clock cleaned at the time. Like we were, like the shadow is Adamy, right? Or at least what they're trying to say is Adamy. What a touching story. You're saying the killer had a change of heart and called the guards to turn stuff in. Nah, 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 no. No, I'm not. When that buzzer sounded, there was three people in that office. The victim, Kane Bullard, and who was already who was already dead. The defendant, Ron Delight, who was out cold. And 
the third person. That's, that's Anvi, the real killer. But how was he there and also... Hmm. Hypothetically, yes. Now then. In this situation, if the real killer made an escape, what would happen? The only one le ones left in the room would be the victim and Ron Delight. And if any security guards came running in that at that time, they would think that I was the murderer. It's pretty airtight. Yes, that was precisely the real killer's objective. To frame Ron Delight for the murder. Oh, what's wrong, Godot? You okay? You okay? Okay, this is good. This is really getting good. He waited a second before he did the spit take. Well done. Order, order. <laughs> it would seem. I've been made to eat my words once again. Actually, been made to do a spit take with a cup of coffee. Yeah. Mr. Wright, who was it? Who was it that tried to frame me? Uh, wait. Wait a second. I'm the one and only Master Master. Nick. You mean the real killer is? We're going to drag that person in here right now. Yeah, they're giving some big hints here. But who is it? I don't have any solid proof yet, but think about it. The killer knew Mr. Light's identity, and they also knew that he had been called to KB security that night. So the killer used him to execute a well-crafted plan to murder Kane Bullard. Hmm, now then let's hear your accusation, Mr. Wright. Who was it that framed Ron Delete for the murder of Kane Bullard? It was... I will say, they pretty much gave it away with the shadow, but I'm glad they're also doing, like, because I was going to say in a minute, like, I wish they kind of did more text-based stuff to, like, lead us to the hint of who it might be. Um, so I'm thinking that, like, yeah, yeah, it was Adamy at this point. Detective Luke Adamy. He's the only one who could have, okay, sorry for doing a side note here, guys, very quick. No, no, we'll do it in a minute. Ace Detective Luke Adamy. You mean Master Mash did it? Your Honor, the person being tried in court next to us is not Master Mask at all. It's so freaking good. He is, in actuality, the true murderer of Kane Bullard. So someone else entirely was donning the costume, donning the cape. In order, order, Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Theft and murder. Which is the more serious crime? They're not even close. Murder is the more serious crime, of course. It's capital crime subject to a capital punishment. Please, like, he said it right there. It's literally the death penalty or it's... Like, going to prison for a few years. It's such a wide difference, you know what I mean? It's such a huge difference. Please remember the trial from yesterday, if you would. When Luke Adamy confessed, there was a huge commotion in the courtroom. Of course, a famous detective was unmasked, as well as masked a mask. Instead of being convicted of murder, he was found guilty of grand larceny. That was his true objective all along. To be found guilty? Master Mask had the perfect alibi for when the murder took place. He was stealing the urn of Lordly Taylor. In other words, being found guilty as Master Mask was Luke Adamy's airtight, watertight, and unassailable alibi. It's pretty good because if you think of it, what happened before Ron, which was really awesome, is that Ron wanted to be tr tried as Master Mask as soon as possible because that would mean he would not be tried for murder. But it's just that Adamy, if we're saying this right, thought of it first and thought of it better. <laughs> If you know what I mean. That's really cool. These two defendants in separate courtrooms are still fighting over who did which co uh, crime. And now it looks like we're getting a bit closer to it. That's such a cool thing. This is a very cool case. This is a very cool case. A guilty verdict. As an alibi, yeah, it works. I mean, it works. It's If it stands up in court, that's the truth, right? You know, it's almost time. Uh, for what? For Luke Adamy's verdict. It was a pretty simple trial, after all. If we're going to stop this trial and stall that one, we need to do it now. Of course. That's assuming you have proof the detective was the one who committed the murder. Phoenix... 
let's let's pause right here. Mr. Lucanemy's trial has indeed attracted the attention of the entire country. If we were to intrude and fail to provide adequate proof of his true crime, Mr. Delight would be left with no grounds for appeal. That is true. Am I really sure about this? <laughs> a bet's only good when your life's the ante. Mr. Wright, I, I believe in you. I believe in you too, Ron. High five. Mr. Delight. So, so please, I'm begging you. Ron, I'm not going to leave you. Not going to leave you. Thanks, but my decision will determine the rest of your life, truly. Can I really risk your life like this? Yes. <gasps> oh, I just got chills just off this single frame of Mia. What was that? Don't stray, Phoenix. Oh my god, that's so... For your client, take the path of trust. She did say this. She trusted us. She put her trust in us and it worked out in the end. That voice. It sounds like I'm getting chills like all over. <laughs> like... Mia. Your Honor. The defense requests an immediate recess. <laughs> so that's your answer, huh? Very well, I've decided as well. This court will now take a 25 mi 20 minute recess. Mr. Wright, when we return, please summon Luke Atme to the stand. Yes, your honor. This is getting so good. October 14, 11.58 a.m. District Court, courtroom number five. Oh, it's pain. <laughs> well, Sir Detective Admi. <laughs> I have to say, Mr. Payne, you perform splendidly. Oh no, Sir Detective Admi. You were the one who... Who are you? That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong this trial. Can we have you? <laughs> Can we bring you in? Are you his cousin or something? What a hairstyle as well. This court finds a defendant look at me. Wait. Don't hand down the verdict yet, please. This is so cool. Like, going into another courtroom to stop another court case to bring in one of the defendants as a freaking witness slash new defendant. That's so cool. That is so cool. Who is this loser, eh? My name is Phoenix Wright, attorney at law, and I wish to file an accusation against this man. Look at me. Accusation? You accuse Master Mask? That man is not Master Mask. He's just a ruthless murderer. Oh my god. What? I'm trying to notice the environment as well to see if the environment changes per court to court. That's such a good to be continued as well. Like, seriously, that's such a good to be continued. I am loving this case. I'm really enjoying myself so much. Uh, yeah, we can say we can farewell my turn. We saved a lot here. Yeah. We saved a lot in the last case. Which makes sense because it was a long case and I probably have to look, cut off episodes a lot. Um, let's save over it. It's okay. Like, it's it's really okay. Um, to talk about what's been happening, though, for now, like, I really feel like this it has been one of the most inventive cases across the whole trilogy. Like, they're doing so many things that we haven't done before, and that's one of the things that, like, I hope to continue to see in future games. But I think I've seen, like, tra a trailer for Dual Destinies before, years ago. And one thing I've noticed that's completely different from this game to that game uh, is that, like, they do a lot more, like, uh, gimmicks in it. Gimmicks isn't a bad thing, by the way. I I'm, a, I'm a wrestling fan, so, like, gimmicks means a good thing, really. Like, they do a lot of different tricks and stuff to make the case, like, everything a little bit more interesting. But in this, it's very, like, the basic form of Phoenix Wright, right? It's the original form of Phoenix Wright. And what they're doing here is, like, using the story uh, as more of a, kind of, like, a way to make the basic ways we're going about these trials like really interesting again like i said phoenix going into a different courtroom to say hey stop it is unbelievably cool i'm so impressed october 14 12 14 p.m district court defending lobby number four my sis i could have sworn i heard mia's voice so then she's still alive 
inside your heart. Maya... I'm sorry, when Maya smiles at anyone, and smiles at us especially, like, jolt. Jolt of electricity. It, like, she's the best. She's the best. She's just the best. Nikki boy. Oh, uh, Mr. Light. It's true that Detective, Detective is a real killer. To be honest, we don't have any definite proof. But he's the only one who could have done it. But wasn't he at Lordy Taylor that night? Not to mention, we don't exactly know his motive. I'm so excited. I'm like, I'm like getting all bubbly. Like, I'm really excited. I mean, why would Detective Abby want to kill Kane Bullard? Oops, it's almost time. Better get back to the courtroom. Okay, why would he want to kill Bullard? Like, my theory now... <sighs> why would he? That's the thing. Like, at first I thought that, like, he would have killed Kane Bullard. Like, just in order to, like, hide, like, the fact that he wanted to, like, steal other stuff as Master Mask. But we're, like, also have a theory that he's not Master Mask at this point. You know what I mean? Like... I hope... I can't wait to find out more. I need to find some solid proof, and it's gonna happen sooner rather than later. This is gonna be hard, but like, honestly, I believe in all of you. I believe that all of you will help me in spirit. October 14, 12, 21 p.m., District Court, Court Number 6. Now then, this court is back in session. Mr. Luke Anime, please take the stand. He's back on the stand. Well, well, how do you do, sir, lawyer? I never would have thought to see you acting so recklessly. I couldn't let them hound down your verdict just yet. Not when it would have given you your perfect alibi. An alibi by the name of Mast Mask. I'm sorry. I'm afraid even the great Luke Atomy has no idea what you mean. Of course, I have been in the next courtroom ever since 10 o'clock this morning. I'm afraid there's no way I could have known what's been going on in here. You've been in the defendant seat all day long, correct? Being tried as Master Mask. Indeed, it's truly child's play to fool the ignorant masses. Not only did the proof, the poor fools asked me to protect their valuables. They even gave me a generous award upon returning their own property to them. Take this red diamond ring that sparkles upon my divine finger, for example. So you continue to insist that you are, in fact, Master Mask. Of course. Very well then, Luke Atme, let us begin with this simple question. On October 12th at 1 a.m., Kane Buller was murdered. Where were you at that time? One without knowledge lacks even the knowledge that he should be ashamed of himself. But don't worry, I will not hold it against you, Sir Judge. Mm, thanks. This is going to be a tough one. This is for sure going to be a tough one to me. I think this is going to be a really hard one. All right, Mr. Atme, the night of the murder, speak. So here's the first testimony here. We'll hear the testimony for sure. We're all ears. As you wish, sir prosecutor. Actually, we're going to hear the testimony in the next episode, guys. I don't know if we're going to finish the case in the next episode, but I do think that we're getting very close to finishing it. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a very interesting part of the case, and I'm so excited to see where this goes. I hope we can figure out something. But we'll see. I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye.